Now in the previous video, the concept was all about saving money while we refurbished that very expensive carbon ceramic brake system, but it failed miserably when our stud snapped in the hub here. So we've found a complete replacement for 200 pounds. So there might actually have been a little bit of a silver lining here because the hub itself is 650 pounds but we got the replacement with the bearing as well. And the bearing is 580 pounds plus VAT. And it does appear that mine is on its way out. I'm gonna compare the two and show you just how bad it is and just see if we did actually save ourselves a bit of money in the end. Okay, so we have a delivery. Hopefully, they've sent me the right one. Cool. That is it, that is the one we need. Now we've already proved we had a problem with the caliper. We've got two of the six pistons working. On this side, we've got to do the other side yet, yeah, don't forget. But we've also got the uh, the new hub and the old hub here. Check this out, this is me trying to spin it. Very, very tight. If I try and do anything, it doesn't move, it doesn't spin. This is the new one. Well, bear in mind, it's probably sat around for a little while. Now that noise is just where it's rubbing a little bit, I think. But other than that, look, look how much more movement I've got on that compared to the old one off the car. We're on to the other side now, and the reason I'm doing this right now before I finish the other side is I want to see if I break any more parts. It's such a disaster today, but so far this is how the job was supposed to go. Two bolts out, very, very simple, no problem at all. Brake pipe disconnected at the back. And that is it. This is ready to go. It should have been an hour tops to do this, changing it over and bleeding the system. Now in the last video, many of you left uh, some great comments and some very handy tips. Now, I love to read those and I try to respond to as many as possible. And typically when I release a video, I'll normally sit around for a good couple of hours and respond to all of those uh, initial comments that come through. So make sure you leave some below. And like I say, they really do help me out. But the overwhelming one that came out of the last video is why didn't I use an impact gun on that, that seized bolt? Well, I actually did. I just didn't show it on camera. I didn't film it. But I used this beefy Mac Tools one and this will do the job on most occasions. However, on that one, it really didn't move it even a millimeter, which is why I switched to the big breaker bar. And well, the breaker bar did break the bolt. But uh, like I say, I did try it and uh, it didn't work on that occasion. Now along with my replacement hub in the post this morning from my guys at Super Performance, we have a couple of other bits we're gonna be replacing. So I've got one drop link that looks a little bit worn, feels a little bit worn, so we're gonna take no risks. We're gonna replace that. The other one is both of my track rod ends. Now, if you look at that, the, the rubber has perished, um, but the bearing just feels a little bit notchy, so uh, take no risks we're going to upgrade those with uh, some new ones track rod end what we did was we took the old ones off but the main thing we've done here is we've made sure that the lock nut there is in the right place now i've measured up just to make sure that these replacements are exactly the same they are the same length so we're literally going to screw this in nip it up tight and it should be in exactly the same place. But what we are gonna be doing anyway as a precaution on this car is uh, at some point next week, when it's all done, we will then, uh, I'm gonna get it all aligned. I need to actually adjust the suspension on this because as you can see here, it's a little bit low and it keeps clipping. So uh, we're gonna be uh, just raising the front just a smidgen and then I'll, uh, I'll get all the alignment done on it anyway. in our track rod end. So it's all starting to come together nicely at the front here. I've just checked all my torque settings. I've got the front carbon ceramic disc on, caliper on next. Now one thing I didn't mention with these upgraded uh, track rod ends are, first of all, the design is, uh, is an upgrade. This is stainless steel. 
and you can see the rubber boot here that which is very very common on these that are split the design has changed so they've got this type of uh, boot here but the major difference between these two and this is the reason the main reason i went for an upgrade is 415 pounds the original ferrari 167 that is a huge savings it means i've got both my fronts for less than the price of one original one and i've got some pocket change that is going on a little bit better than the old one came off that's how it's meant to happen ah guys this is becoming an absolute nightmare of a job <sighs> brake pipe end has snapped off final part of this side was to literally connect the brake pipe to the back of the caliper however as soon as i started turning the little uh, connector well i knew something was wrong and a couple of turns later it is literally sheared off it was uh not good and you can see this side as well was not really too hot either now got another problem i need to get the connector out which is gonna be uh, a bit of a pain anyway um that is not the worst part of it the worst part of it is i need this car like literally tomorrow afternoon and uh emergency call to ferrari to see if we could get one of these and uh they don't have one they don't even have one in italy they have got these on back order they're going to be making next month and that doesn't work with what we need to do here so um plan b i think we're gonna to have to try and make a brake pipe but i need to order some bits up. now the only thing that is good watch this I can actually spin my front wheels for the first time in a long time. So as I said earlier, the carbon ceramic brakes are notorious for these pistons for seizing. Now we're going to do something um, and try and sort this out. Now if I took this car to Ferrari with these brakes, they would look at these and basically they would have to replace the whole thing. This would all go in the bin. I don't do things like that. We're going to try and save this. This is a perfectly good usable caliper all we got to do is remove these old pistons check them and if needs be replace them and the seals on it so the problem we have though and the reason these get thrown in the bin is nobody can remove the pistons but i'm going to try a clever little trick my mate pat told me watch this so you are going to have to excuse the mess here i have been uh, trialing an error in with various bits here and you can see yeah the the spills of my errors now this is my caliper you can see we have these little c clamps in place now these two pistons were the ones that were moving the other four were seized on this caliper and what we've got now is a grease gun a couple of uh, cartridges of grease and it's all connected up with the pipe that comes with the kit cost me about i think 15 pounds something like that not even that a um, couple of extra cartridges as backups basically and um, we're just going to pump this and we're going to see if we can get the pistons out now i've already been successful with one three more to go let's try it so we're going to pump this hopefully we've got enough grease in here so we want to see either that one this one is a little bit locked with this c clamp so but it doesn't matter i can change that at the end these two really are the only two at the moment that are free to move on this i don't know how much grease i've got left back in this uh, first cartridge but oh, you can see look watch this this is pushing the c-clamp there you go let's pop that one out okay so what we're going to do is i'm going to clamp those two and then we're down to our final two little pistons there if we can get all of these out <laughs> we're on um, for a winner We're almost there with this caliper so all four of these pistons are free now you can see i've got my sockets here i'll explain why in a second that one is also uh, free so it's clamped up i'm down to the final piston which i'm struggling with now 
<laughs> the pressure this thing is under. When I have bolted these in using my clamp, just holding them in place so they don't pop out, look at that, it snapped not just one, two clamps. So that's why I've got these sockets kind of balancing in between the two pistons, pushing against it so that they're not going anywhere. I've got this final one here clamped up. These seem to hold nicely. Luckily, these things were literally a few quid. So uh, we're down to the final one here and uh, I'm going to have one more go here. Okay, look at this guys. This has got so much force behind it. It's twisting this clamp here, but it's just stopping itself on the uh, body there. So if we give it a few more, hopefully we'll start moving this, but that is also being stopped by this. So it's really tight. All right, final one. Just coming out now. Brilliant. Okay, job done. And there we have it. Number six piston is out with a load of grease. This is the messiest job ever. I've got grease everywhere. It's all over the camera. But we have potentially saved ourselves a very, very expensive caliper that would otherwise just end up in the bin by using a simple trick grease gun not expensive at all this whole lot was probably about 20 pounds just finished stripping down that caliper let's take a look at these pistons there you go you can see how badly that is all corroded crudded up and um, pitting into the metal there now a lot of that is actually on the surface you could try and take a very fine wet and dry and see if you get I'm sure the majority of it off but once we started pitting into the metal, it's game over for those. So our solution is, we've had a set of new pistons made up. That's 12 there for the two front calipers, along with a set of new seals to go in. That cost me about 300 pounds. Well worthwhile considering those two front calipers uh, with that will be over, what, 4,000 pounds. So the next part is the body of um, the caliper where we've put all that grease in and all the gunk from before. That's heading in for a bath. And the final part of the process is I'm going to use my ultrasonic cleaner. We're going to throw the caliper in there, give it a bath, get rid of all of the grease and all of the existing crud on that caliper. Makes a horrendous noise, but it's worth it. If anyone's got any good recommendations on getting this broken uh, bolt out from here, as you can see, it's uh, below the surface, that bit's about flush, so maybe someone could get something welded on there. But you saw the force it took to actually move this, probably about a third of the way out, and then it snapped. So uh, it's going to be a pretty tricky job, even if you could get something welded on there. So um, if there's any companies out there that could do this and probably put a new thread in there, then uh, that would be fantastic. Drop them in the comments below. On to our next little adventure today, which is a brake pipe problem. So that is the uh, broken pipe. That is the connector. I actually got it out very easy. It wasn't, wasn't a problem at all. Um, so what we have to do here is make our own because Ferrari can't get one until next month. Um, so we've got all the kit here. We've got the uh, pipe. I've got two loads of pipe. I've got my uh, spanners. We've got a cutter. We've got a deburring tool. Uh, we have got some new little end fittings there. I've got a brake pipe straightener. And then we have, this is the uh, the magic bit here. This is the actual kit. Uh, so we've got this, two little fittings and some grease. That all comes in this lovely box here. And then the final bit we have is a little pipe bending tool here. So the plan is we are gonna measure this up, but this is slightly bent out of shape from where it was uh, removed from the car. So we're gonna use this and we're also gonna use a reference to the uh, picture on the Ferrari website of a new one. So, first things first, we are gonna use this to measure up how much pipe we need. I'm then gonna cut it, and we'll start from there. I'm gonna cut off the amount I need. So, very simple, just push this on, clamp it up slightly, not too much. Twist it around a few times. And then we just, that starts to get loose. So we tighten it up a little bit more. That cuts into the metal slightly further. Same again, tighten it up. That is our pipe. That's done. 
So then we use this deburring tool. So we've got this edge here, which goes on the inner side like that. Because if you want to look at the end there, see, it's just not perfect. Same with that one where it's been cut before. So we just push that in the end there. Just make the edge nice, like so. And then we're going to get the outer edge as well, and that is with this side. There we go. A bit better. Right, so looks good. That looks good. <clears throat> now, next thing pipe straightening tool. I'm going to start, start with a straight pipe. Now, this has uh, various settings. We're going down to 5 mil on this one. Okay, so the next part of the process is we're going to create the flange on the end of our brake pipe in order for it to sit nicely on here and make the connection to the brake caliper. So what we need is our special tool here. So this is our special tool, two 10 mils. So we're going to put the pipe in the end here and then we are just going to keep that thumb tight on these two like this. We take our little stop end here, a bit of special grease on the end. Now that is going to go in the end here. And then what we need to do is tighten that up with our 16 mil spanner. Now these, like I say, are just thumb tight. And what this is doing is it's going to put our pipe in the correct position. So that's right in there now. We're going to tighten these two up. Okay, good. Remove our little stop end. Now, that pipe is in the correct position for the next and the final major part of the process. So this is our little flange tool. And we have two different types here, depending on the type of flange you have on the, uh, on the brake pipes here. So we have just got just a very standard one on the Ferrari. So we're gonna put that in there. Got a bit of grease on it again. Bit of muscle. This is my practice pipe, by the way. Okay, so that is right in, up to the collar. Then, take this out. See inside there. Got a nice flange, hopefully. Take these off. And voila, that is the flange we've created that sits nicely. Happy with that. Right, next part of the process is we need to bend it in shape. Now we're using the original as a reference, but this is really out of shape. So we're also mainly using the picture from Ferrari. So we're gonna take our pipe bending tool here. Now again, this is just my practice one. So we're gonna create the end bit there for a start. So we're going to take this, we're going to put it in the tool here. Now this has three different slots on it and the correct one for this pipe is the middle one. We're going to put that in there, so we need to get it as close to that as possible. Okay, and here we go, ready? And that's it. Simple as that, basic tools, easy, easy to do. Um, first time I've ever done it, and um, well, I don't know what I was worried about. Anyway, that is done. This little lot, by the way, cost me about, about 70 pounds. This was the most expensive part of it, which was the uh, straightener. Uh, I didn't actually need that really for this job. I could have quite easily have bent that into shape by hand. But the reason I didn't mind spending on all of these is because I've got to do the whole brake system on the BBI very shortly. Uh, so this is really good practice. We practice on a very cheap car. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead now, bend or make a new one to mimic the factory one. And um, we'll see how we get on. Okay, so here's our completed line. I'm really happy with how it comes out. It even looks factory in that color. 
giving it a good clean with some uh, clutch and brake cleaner there. Uh, cleaned all the ends up where we just had some grease. And now we're going to fit it in place. To do that, this is going to go down here. This end is going to screw into brake line there. Then we're going to come to the other side. I'm going to move the steering wheel around this way a little bit and we're going to screw the other part into the caliper. This is going into uh, the caliper. Now I should really learn my lesson and use a proper brake spanner. I'm just being very careful here at the moment. And this is really just to test and make sure. I might have to take it off again if, uh, if there's anything not quite right here. Make a little bend. But so far, it all looks good. I'm going to tighten the other end up. I will get my correct spanner and just do this properly. Last job today is we're going to have to bleed these brakes. Now, I don't have time to go to the shop to pick up the computer to be able to do this. And I can't drive the car there. So we're going to go old school. Josh is my wingman today. He's going to pump the pedal. I'm going to bleed the brakes. Fingers crossed this is going to work. I really, really cannot risk anything else going wrong with this one. So please, car, be good to me on this final job. We're going to do that. And then uh, if that works, we'll take the car out for a little test. So we're testing the car. So far, so good. Let's see uh, if it makes the right noises. Well guys, I'm extremely happy to report that that was a complete success. The car is driving absolutely perfectly now, stopping, and it's not squirreling all over the place, so it's not lethal anymore, but it was one hell of a job, and I think the word here is perseverance. Um, because we did that, we did it here on the drive, um, we have probably saved quite a bit of money. We'll come to that in a second, uh, but in the process, I've also learned some new skills, and, um, well, none of them were really too tricky. I hope you guys learned something from that as well. But how much money did we save by doing it ourselves? Well, obviously I had the spare set of calipers that cost me 800 pound. I didn't really have to use those. It was more to do with the uh, pistons. So I will be refurbishing the yellow calipers with those new pistons. And we are gonna be using them on a, another project, which you will see shortly. I'll let you have a few guesses below what you think that is. But before that comes to the channel, we are back on the BBI, baby. Uh, where the next video is BBI. You'll be very, very pleased to hear. I've been planning it and we have one heck of a mountain to climb on that project. But that is next video very, very shortly. Um, so we saved on this project by doing it ourselves, about over 4,000 pound on two new calipers. Don't forget, I did all the work on this. The labor on that one really would have been um, quite a lot of money, plus the uh, pads, plus the fact that many of you think that, you know, some of these things, uh, tips and tricks, we would have got that bolt out. I'm telling you, that bolt was so seized in there. Uh, it would we might someone might have got some magic and got some luck and got it out but i'm pretty sure the uh the the thread was see uh, gone as well so it would all have to be tapped so i think 200 pound was a good worthwhile investment especially because we got a, over a 700 pound hub with it as well bearing um bearing and hub was over well over a thousand pounds there which cost me 200 so uh, grand scheme of things probably saved a good well over 5,000 especially that's without labor then I did have to pay for uh, the track rod ends and the drop link which would have all had to have been changed anyway because they were perished so we saved money by doing that myself on labor and I saved money by buying them because if I had bought the Ferrari ones well you saw the prices so we saved quite a few thousand by doing this on the driveway and I learned some new skills and enjoyed it at the same time didn't quite enjoy it when the uh, bolt broke but anyway that is uh how it goes sometimes you win some you lose some as i said in the last video hope you guys learned something from it hope you uh enjoyed it and if you did don't forget make sure you hit that like button down there and some of you 
I have done some research, I'm not subscribed, and the ones that are, are not clicking on my notifications. 14% of you have notica notifications switched on, so please take a little second to click on the notifications down there, because it really does help me out. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed it. You can check out what I get up to on a daily basis with uh, all of these crazy cars over on my socials. Till the next one, on the BBI baby. I will see you very shortly. Take care, and... Ciao for now.